Okay, here's the truth. Uh, this is the truth between the beef with Funk Master Flex and Interscope Records. Now, Funk Master Flex, and for those who don't know how the music business works, majority of the time when you're at a major radio station, if a radio is hot, the DJs would normally play it or spin it. And the amount of spins you get daily normally generates the revenue that you get because you hear it so much on the radio, you want to get, you got to go get the record. And normally, this is done with money under the table, record labels very excited about the money that they're spending they don't mind and sometimes the DJ the record is so hot that the DJ want to play it anyway because they get more hits if we're playing that record so that way you don't even have to pay for the spins but normally it goes like they'll do something for that DJ as for him showing love to their record so not all the time is it payola but sometimes for artists that's not known or don't have a big name in the game <clears throat> money is like distributed under the table and that artist is getting spins and people be like how did this garbage make the radio I make this show because somebody pays some money to promote that artist and what they started to notice Funk Master Flex because anytime this guy rants it's about some money you know everything he try to make it all always about hip hop because I'm standing up for the culture <laughs> I'm so nice <laughs> One point three five. <laughs> Yo, if you attack me, I come back at you. <laughs> Who you playing with, me or yourself? <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> Funk Master Flex is upset because his money stopped. And the reason why his money stopped is because in the business when you got certain artists they normally appeal to certain brackets of the different genres like hip hop, pop, techno. So you, you pick your stations on what you would do. Normally before you go to the pop charts you normally go with the urban market or R&B first. You go with that, you know, you make that record first and they go to radio. And then if it's hot enough, it'll hit the pop charts later. Or you'll make the pop record first and go there. Or if the record they feel is pop, they go there. Nowadays, what Interscope was doing is for some of the artists... They were just taking them straight to the pop stations. They were going straight pop and not the hip hop route. They're going to go to the pop charts first and they were saying we'll have more success just using the pop angle and so therefore less money was being thrown under the table to flex and he's not getting the certain people he wanted to get from Interscope and now he's feeling salty because he's like okay well you guys are bypassing me and going straight to the pop station well then I'm not finna play y'all music anymore so I'm sorry 50 Cent I'm sorry Eminem yo I like Eminem he's nice and he's got an album coming out and the summer jam announcement is coming up <laughs> <laughs> so 
As soon as he did it, he first, he was calling around to see what was going on to get a situation and hoping he'd get a call back from somebody. So nobody said nothing to him. He never got a call from Interscope at first. But then when he said he wasn't going to play Dre's record or Eminem record, he got a call from 50. <laughs> it was facts. Man, this 50. Man, are you crazy? You just say you ain't going to play M, M record or Dre record? Are you crazy? I, I mean, you you think about it for a second. Who does that hurt? Them or you? If you allow that to process in your brain, you 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 realize that don't make any sense. You want to make enemies of Eminem and Dre and Tech and Esco? Like, I don't disagree with most of the stuff you're saying because my contract's about up and. You know, 50, y'all, he still tried to do business with Theo. Theo and 50 really, you know, I think that's a dead deal. You know, they tried to do business, but when Chris Lightly passed, you know, Theo just, you know. And it's a shame, because after a couple of days, the, the threat or whatever never materialized. Because one... Eminem is too powerful. He's too powerful for you to tell the station, Hot 97, that you are going to not play their records. So, Hot 97, the, the bosses or the people who run the station got a call from Interscope. They didn't call Funkmaster Flex. Nobody contacted him. He got contacted by his boss and was told there will never be a boycott <laughs> on Eminem or Dr. Dre or anybody else. So you don't have the authorization to cancel not playing their songs. And if I hear that you did not play their song on purpose, you will be removed. Now, Anybody can go ask Funk Master Flex that this happened. He gonna lie. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> I'm my own boss. <laughs> but we all know the truth. He got an answer to somebody. And because he got an answer to somebody, that somebody didn't have to answer to him. Y'all got to realize something. Eminem is powerful. He has a powerful machine that backs him. Because a lot of things are built on him. They were looking for that with Vanilla Ice. It didn't work. They were looking for something that they could build off of that we would accept. And Eminem, we accept it because he can rap. But they used him as a tool to control and manipulate the music and it's partially his fault because he didn't put a foot down he didn't have any backbone if he had any backbone you know things would have been different but he looked at it as why well, I'm gonna stand up to them Things are going good for me. Why am I stand up to these people for to, to defend people and that don't want me in this? That's his position. But the position really was bigger than that. You are part of, and been invited into part of a culture and accepted by people who basically created this culture and you're an invited guest into this culture of hip hop respect the culture that should have came first you should have said no I know what you're doing I don't want no parts of that even if it mean I can't sell another record and y'all ain't gonna look out for me no more I'm good cause I know I got accepted with what I already did 
I'll build on my own. But he didn't have that type of mentality. He went with the program. That's the problem. And what he allowed them to do is what they wanted him to do. And they took care of him, made sure Eminem straight. Anybody who's a threat to Eminem was removed immediately. They they couldn't come to award shows. And people think 50 Cent and Ja Rule, 50 Cent destroyed Ja Rule. No, Eminem destroyed Ja Rule. <laughs> That's what happened. Because once you made Eminem not feel safe, and you coming out to Eminem, now you have a major problem. They have to get rid of you. Eminem don't feel safe. And if Eminem don't feel safe, oh, they got to make them safe. Oh, Ja Rule, can't, he's been nominated for some Billboard Awards? Oh, no, he's not. Because he's not going to be allowed in the building. If Eminem's showing up, oh, they can't be there. And then people are like, man, Ja Rule, them, they scared to come everywhere. Eminem, them, they had all the parties and everything. Oh, Murder Inc. wasn't allowed to be anywhere. And you know what? If they want to step up and, and try to come to any type of events, cut off. Records want to be played? Nope, cut off. Eminem mixtape, play that. That's going everywhere. And they make it look like the other side's not doing anything. But they can't. Matter of fact, throw an FBI investigation on them. <laughs> Even though we know they're innocent, they'll go broke trying to fight it. Now they're done. It's a dirty game. I'm telling you, this whole game is dirty. And you gotta pick your fights. They own the XXL. What does that tell you? Eminem got shunned by the source. They boycotted Eminem and everything else, his movement. They spoke on it. What did they do? They shut the source down. Had to get rid of the Bazino and everybody. Took all they everything from them and made XXL bigger than the source. They bought into it. Why you think on every XXL cover you got shady records all over it? They own it. Under wraps. They they run all of this that you see today. They have turned this into a joke and they dictate to you what's hip hop and what's not. Look at your favorite artist now. Is he is he not cold? Is he still not kicking that real? Why you ain't supporting him? Why you ain't buying him? He's still kicking dope lyrics. You don't care about that no more. You want to get turned up. I don't know if y'all remember this, but Eminem had a bully. That he talked about in his rap. Y'all remember that? Uh, what was that? The Slim Shady AP? I was harassed by this fat kid named D'Angelo Bailey. I was harassed daily by the fat kid named D'Angelo Bailey. You remember that? Talking about him getting beat up in the boys' room. Who? I mean, there's plenty of people that got beat up in school. What makes them and them even didn't? I oh, forget all that. But D'Angelo Bailey, for them using his name without his permission, who also took credit from doing an interview saying, "Yeah, he did bully Eminem while they was in school," sued Eminem for slander. And for two years, they put this thing through all kind of debates and everything else and courts. And so they had to finally come to a decision and a ruling on it. The judge, whose name was Deborah Servito, 
Because I want everybody to look up this judge and find out where she is. She not only threw his case out, even though it was truly to true to form, this guy used his name and called him a bully. Not to say that he was lying, but you did kind of defame the guy and saying what happened back when you were in school. This guy's probably out a job now, living a life, and now you portrayed him as this bully. And millions of people bought this record. So, defamation of character was definitely, you know, in the um, works here. I don't, I don't see how this could be a case where they didn't settle it out of court. But anyway, it goes to court, and this judge decides to throw the case out and did it in a rap. How disrespectful to the ju judicial system you can be by delivering your ruling in a rap. Mr. Bailey complains that his raps is trash. So he's seeking compensation in the forms of cash. Bailey thinks he's entitled to some monetary gain because Eminem used his name in vain. The lyrics are stories no one would take as facts. They're an exaggeration of a childish act. This is real, y'all. Now, would he be the first person to have a judge go in his favor and rule? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The man has power on his side. You cannot you cannot diss him and him and have a career. Look what they did to cannabis. I told y'all anybody who tries to battle this man or confront this man is ran out of the business you will not get shows you will not get your song on the radio you cannot get your cd press to be anywhere they will shut you down if you do not coincide with eminem you will not succeed period they will shut you down you have to accept him, and if you don't, this is what's going to happen to you. They're going to come for you, and they're going to make sure if you're coming out the Eminem, you will have no career in this rap. And when it's all said and done, and he's gone, they're going to make him the pinnacle of all hip hop. Whenever they talk about it, his picture will be shown. Now, do you want some more example of his power? <laughs> this man has custody of Kim's other daughter, who is not his child. The father of that child, who works has a job. He's not making any M&M type money. But that's his child. And by law, he should have rights to his child. But instead, Eminem was taking care of his daughter and claiming that's his other daughter. And using his lawyers to keep this guy away and harassing him to stay away and not to fight. And he don't have the money to keep trying to fight him and him over his own child. I'm telling you. And don't forget, when he had the case with the gun charge and he got off the gun charge. He has custody of his child. 
and he starts going through depressional overdose and all this stuff why the state didn't take his kid he's going around using Vicodin pistol whipping a guy but yet and still him and him gets a pass they don't take his daughter from him and put her in holding he was on probation pleaded no contest and he was able to keep his daughter when he had the, the drug overdose he was still able to keep custody of his daughter when he was avidly on pills for depression and he's take popping them and about to kill himself on over an overdose because he couldn't cope they still gave him rights to his child that's power he's very well protected now this doesn't mean Eminem is a bad person I don't want people to look like say man Eminem is just evil it's the power that's around him he's aware of it he uses it at different times when he needs something done or he's worried about something They get things done. The same power that protected 50 Cent. Two people got problems with 50 Cent. They got deported. You don't find that unusual? Two people get problems with 50 Cent. One guy that was in his G unit gets deported. The other guy didn't like him. As soon as he get out of jail, <laughs> deported. Deported. I'm like, wow, two guys, what are the odds? Two guys get deported? They got problems with 50 Cent. Another guy who's a businessman? And a record label owner who had millions of dollars from acts like the game, other Interscope artists. Once they thought that he was trying to kill a member of G Unit, Mr. Jimmy Henchman, they had him mysteriously investigated for murder, arrested for murder. He was on the run saying that he set up the murder attempt murder or whatever they call charged him with and give, they about to give him life if he didn't get it already cause some bodyguard that died and they are gonna link him to it right away that's power and 50 got the protection because he's aligned with Eminem he gave Eminem his street cred. Eminem got tough. His lyrics got tough because he had 50 Cent. Then he could start rapping like Tupac now. He got 50 Cent, now he's Tupac. So, I don't, I mean, I guess you guys, many people see this. It doesn't mean the man cannot rap. Some people seem to think I hate Eminem. I was one of the free people who, like like I did with Jay-Z, I'm one of the few people that had Eminem CD and was telling people, this guy can rap. Blacks did not play the Slim Shady LP. They didn't give a damn about Eminem. They didn't mess with Eminem till the second CD came out. I played the Slim Shady LP. I was telling them they gotta listen to Shroom. 
I was gonna tell them they gotta listen to Brain Damage and all those songs. I was the one that was playing those songs. Role model. I'm like, listen to this. But all they thought is, all they were thinking about was, Hi, my name is, hi, my name is. That's all, you know, Black Swing, they didn't care about that. So Eminem's success came mostly from pop. And Blacks just looked at them, you know, they played the safe role, made them funny. Comedy, dropping his pants on stage. Like, they were making him more of a joke. Like a gimmick when he first came out. Like he's funny. He can rap a little bit, but he's funny. So he, he gets a pass. But he could rap. And I'm like, man, dude can. No, he really can rap. You listen to this CD? No, dude can rap. He can flow. And you can't take that away from him. But you could tell some of the songs were not structured right. It's somebody rhyming, but it's like, they just rhyming. You know, it's just no direction on it. And some of the songs are really structured. And that that's how you can tell the the work with Dr. Dre and by Doc being around and everybody. they You, you can feel the structuring happen. That's why when the Marshall Mather CD came out, it was so complete. Like, he had grew up a little bit. And even though the the content was kind of different, it was a it was a real record. That CD, uh, I mean, some would say it's his best CD, but for me, I kind of like the Eminem show because he was still broke. He he wasn't broke. He was on the verge of making millions of dollars when he made the Marshall Mathers LP. He hadn't made it yet, and he had the fame. And it's like, okay, you got famous because of your first LP. Now you finna get the money. So this the CD that was finna blow up anyway. Everybody was waiting for another CD from Eminem, and he knocked it out the park. And he was just talking about how he couldn't even go to certain places anymore. And he was noticing the transitions. To about the third album, now he's rich. Now he's famous. This is where, see, real MCs or real people that love hip-hop, they listen to the lyrics of the song. And you can tell what's going through a person's life. By listening to the lyrics and where they were at the different points in time. He was free when he was making the Marshall Mathers LP. He had a little fame, but the money wasn't always there yet. He was doing alright, but now he, this didn't put him on a plateau. And when you see, hear songs like Say Goodbye to Hollywood. And it talks about the pains of being rich that he has to adjust to because now what he wanted them to do is to be famous and give them a life they never had but now he forced them to live isolated because they can't they can't go out in public anymore people would be to cause a riot so this isn't the life he pictured he thought it would be something else but it became different his whole life is different now now he's got money he's got to get security he's got to do this so his life was changing before everybody's eyes. So on those, those three CDs, you see the pinnacle of Eminem, the, the, the growth, to when you get to Encore, you see somebody who's exhausted from all of it. And it's just borderline, like, I'm, what's next? I don't even know what's next. I have no direction. I don't know what else to do. I... I'm making an album because I got a deadline. And Encore was like some of the worst work I've ever heard in my life. And I said, oh my gosh, this is terrible. This is not good. And 
I think he knew it. And that's why he's like, I'm retiring. Because he knew he was, he was spent. And if you listen to the lyrics of songs, instead of bopping your head to whatever pop song they give you in the beat, you would see all this in progression. And for Eminem, he needs to be surrounded by inspiration. He can't be in the hood anymore. And when you're out of your environment, it's just like a comedian. How everybody be like, man, he used to be funny back in the day. Now he ain't got rich. He ain't funny no more. And look at Eddie Murphy, man. Well, Eddie, man, Eddie ain't funny no more. They don't, they're out there environment. So what's funny to them now or what's funny to people now, they jokes relate to people who got money. You know, they they super rich. So they can't relate to the what it's like to be poor. They've been rich longer than they've been poor now. They can't. Re they don't really remember those days and talk about all the stuff back then. And you know, it's good when you broke. You're in that environment, just like a rapper. They need to when they're in that environment, they can write. But when you living in a plush, isolated suburb and you know you away from everything, what you gonna write about? The yacht club wouldn't let you in. <laughs> Your membership. So that's all done. So what they do <clears throat> is they align themselves with like they homies from the hood. And hang around them so that they can get the lingo. What's popping now and get the inspiration to write again. They need somebody who can go there. That's why he's like I gotta go get D12. I got to get Royce and all these dudes. That's why he had to get Slaughterhouse. He needs some guys that can spit and give him the credibility and give him the material to go ahead and write. That inspiration is everything. It's key. So key. But I've taken up a lot of y'all time. But I haven't made a long video like this in a very long time. I think probably Jay Z and was it Jay Z and and Benny Siegel probably. But I'm out. Follow the, the playlist. The truth behind all the hip hop videos, hip hop beefs. I might have to lay it down. <laughs> this one. I'm this one got me hoarse. I'm out. Oh, yeah, the guy was like, can you do a Dr. Dre voice one more time on one of your videos? All right, I'll do the Dr. Dre voice before I cut it off. Yeah, yeah, that's dead right. <laughs> What's up, y'all? <laughs> All right, good night.